Hey everyone, today I'm going to give you a super quick tutorial on how to use a ternary phase diagram to plot data for a three component solvent system, like what you'll be using in experiment three to plot your data. So in experiment three, once you go through the calculations, what you end up with or what you will end up with is a set of data where you have um, percent by mass of three different components from the solvent system. For that experiment, it's uh, a system of water, acetic acid, and chloroform. And so as part of the report, you need to plot that data on a ternary phase diagram. And that diagram looks like what we have here. So it's a triangle um, and essentially is a graph that has three different axes. Um, every point on this graph describes the percentage by weight of each of those three components um, in a mixture. And so the way that you'll be plotting your data uh, is using this diagram. Uh, each corner of the ternary phase diagram represents 100% um, of one of the particular components. So for example, at the top of this one, I'm going to write that in as 100% water. Uh, another corner is 100% acetic acid. And then the last corner, 100% chloroform. Um, and you can choose to put any of these different solvents at any of the corners. So understanding how this works, I find it easiest to break it up um, into the individual components. Uh, so if we first want to consider water, uh, the 100% water point is up here at the top. So if you have just a beaker of water or a sample of water, the data point that would represent that is the point on the top. Um, but to represent the amount of chloroform and acetic acid, so if you have a mixture of the three, there'll be points um, anywhere within this triangle. So this top point is 100% water, and anywhere along this bottom line would be a point that has 0% water in it. Um, so, the further you move up vertically, the higher the percentage of water in the mixture. And that works analogously for the other three components. So if we wanna do chloroform next, this point down in the bottom left is 100% chloroform. And then the axis immediately across from it is 0% chloroform. So as you move towards the corner, you increase the percentage of solvent um, that's in the mixture. And that works the same for acetic acid. So 100% acetic acid's down in the right corner. And so the axis across from it is where your point, you, where the point would be if you had a mixture with 0% acetic acid. And as you move closer to that corner, the opposite corner, you you would be describing an increasing amount of acetic acid. So the way that you translate um, a data point onto the graph is to, again, consider the three different components. So I have some example data points that I'll plot on here, so hopefully you can get an idea of how you go about plotting them. So for the first one, I have 0% water, 30% acetic acid, and 70% chloroform. So for a point with 0% water, that is going to fall somewhere along the 0% water line. So it's going to be the furthest away it could be from the 100% water point. Um, but now I need to represent that it's 30% acetic acid and 70% chloroform. So if we consider the 30% acetic acid, uh, we can start at the 0% acetic acid line. And then we're gonna to move towards 100% acetic acid um, until we get to 30. So um, each of these big kind of triangles is 10%. So if I go along here, that would be at 10% acetic acid. Along here would be 20. Along here is 30, which is what we want to show. And so where those two lines intersect, um, 
So the 30% acetic acid and the 0% water, that is where you would plot your point. So you don't necessarily have to go and plot the third percentage on there. Since we're working in percentages, if you plot the first two, um, the way that the math works out is that the last, uh, the last component um, will be represented by that dot. I always like to go back and double check um, and plot that third component to make sure it matches. So um, if we want to check um, the chloroform component, so we're gonna start at 0% chloroform and we wanna go up to 70, so that's zero, 10%, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70. And so that point describes a mixture that would be 0% water, 30% acetic acid, and 70% chloroform. I'll do a couple more just so um can uh, plot any amount of data. So the next one is 10% water, 60% acetic acid, and 30% chloroform. So if we want a data point that is um 10% water, we can start here along this line is 0% water. And so the next one up is 10%. So our lines or our point is going to be somewhere along that line. 60% acetic acid will go about it the same way. So along this line would be zero. Along this side would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. And so where those two lines intersect is our dot point. And then you can just go back and check that the chloroform uh, matches the data point. And so we'll have 0% chloroform, 10, 20, and 30. So that is point B. And so I'll go through a few more just quickly. So 40% water, 30% acetic acid, 30% chloroform, point C. So 40% water goes 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. It'll be somewhere along that line. Then we have 30% acetic acid. So we have 0, 10, 20, 30. And we have our point of intersection. So that's where our data point should be. And then I'll just double check the chloroform. So 0. Oops. We have 0%, 10%, 20%, 30%. And that one lines up as well. So we have the right data point. D is 20% water, 6% acetic acid, 74% chloroform. So 20% water will be along here. 6% acetic acid. So here is 0% and here is 10. Um, and so each of these little lines represents 2%. So if we want 6%, we're going to go 2, 4, 6. And so there's our point where they intersect. Um, and then you can double check chloroform, which is 74. So here is, ooh, here is 70. And then up two points, so 72, and then 74. So that one works. And lastly, we have 92% water, 2% acetic acid, and 6% chloroform. So 92% water, so we're all the way up here. 2% uh, acetic acid, so that's there, and 6% chloroform. So we are right up there. Um, so the data that you'll be plotting will look differently from this. I just plotted some random points, but yours should form um, something that looks like this. Um, and then you need to denote what each of these regions is. So that is how you use a ternary phase diagram to plot the data from experiment three. And good luck with your reports.